Throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Today's verse comes to us from the 35th chapter of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Please rise as you're able for the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the seventh chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home and found the child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and he put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said to him, Ephephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened and his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. As I spent this last week preparing the sermon, I have to admit it was not a good uh, week of sleep for me. It was really rather fitful. I don't know, maybe some of you can relate. Have you ever had one of those nights? Right? I would fluff the pillow and I'd pull the blankets and smooth out the sheets, but it just didn't matter. Didn't matter what I did, I couldn't get comfortable. Try the right side, sleep on the left side. No, I'm still not comfortable. It was driving me crazy. It didn't matter what I did. I couldn't get comfortable. And that is exactly how I feel about this morning's texts. These texts are some really, really hard words. And it didn't matter how many commentaries I consulted or how many reference books I was looking into. I just couldn't get comfortable with what I was hearing. And sometimes, that's what scripture does to us. It makes us uncomfortable. And that's okay. So this morning, let's lean into that discomfort. Maybe let's be open to what that's trying to tell us. 
So what makes us uncomfortable this morning? It's Jesus' encounter with this Syrophoenician woman. And now can we stop right there? We have a Syrophoenician woman. Who is she? She's a stranger. What's her name? What do we know about her? Okay? When we encounter a stranger, sometimes we resort to labels to identify them. This, this, this Syrophoenician woman, she, she's labeled by her gender and her ethnicity. She is a woman. She is a foreigner. She is a Gentile. She is an other. When we encounter others or strangers, we do use labels. Sometimes we get squeamish and we don't want to get too close, so we don't really want to know their name. And sometimes that limits their humanity to us when we don't name them. But this unnamed foreign Gentile woman, she is important. She is so important. We know this because her story got recorded in the gospel. So we know we need to pay attention to her. This woman comes to Jesus and she's begging. She's beseeching him on behalf of her daughter. Please, Jesus, release my daughter from this evil demon. And then here's the uncomfortable part. Jesus' response. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Ouch. I mean, I spent a long time trying to get comfortable with that, and you just can't. It is as harsh as it sounds. Jesus just refused to help her daughter, and Jesus just called this woman a little dog. This response is so unexpected Scholars and theologians have endlessly debated what could possibly be his intent. So some will say, no, 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 he didn't really mean it. He was just testing this woman. But others will say, oh, well, we, you know, we believe in an incarnate Christ, right? Jesus is fully divine, but he's also fully human, so maybe he's just having a human moment. And it, it doesn't really matter how we parse this response. What matters is that we feel we need to because it makes us so incredibly uncomfortable. My Jesus, my Jesus wouldn't refuse to heal this woman's daughter. My Jesus would never call somebody a name. And yet there it is. But the encounter doesn't end there. This woman of bold faith, she engages in a little strategic wordplay with Jesus. She, she turns his own words into an argument on behalf of her daughter. Sir, even the dogs under the table will eat the children's crumbs. She's not asking for pity. She's not asking for fairness. She's only asking for crumbs. This wonderful woman, she understands that the power, the mercy, the grace, the compassion of Jesus is so abundant that there is more than enough for the children, and the dogs will gladly accept the leftover crumbs. Jesus can feed the children, or, or Jesus can minister to the, the Jewish children, the Israelites. He can minister to them first. She knows that Jesus can do that and still have enough for her daughter. This wo woman, this mother, she's not trying to take anything from anyone. She is content with letting everybody else be fed first. She believes that Jesus can give to all the children and there will still be enough for her daughter. And not only that, but she knows her daughter needs only a crumb. So after hearing this argument, Jesus grants the woman's request. He heals her daughter just as he was asked. How do we respond when we encounter the people who are the others among us? Do we label them? Put them in boxes or categories? 
Do we react with hostility or call names? Do we respond in fear? Because we're afraid that maybe they will take something away from us and there might not be enough for them and us. As we read the headlines and we watch the news lately, we see there are so many people struggling to figure out how do we deal with each other? How do we deal with people who are others, who are coming into our country and our lives? We see the people acting, and they're acting out of fear, and that makes us all uncomfortable. But at least we know that that response is human, and it is nothing new. When we hear today's text, we're shocked. We're shocked by Jesus calling this woman a little dog. Now, at the time when the gospel was written, Jesus' disciples probably wouldn't have even remarked on that. But they would have been absolutely astounded that their Jewish Messiah was willing to heal the daughter of a foreign, Jew, a foreign Gentile woman. That's what they would have found scandalous. So we find that we're shocked and we are uncomfortable with Jesus' initial response to the woman, but Jesus doesn't end the encounter there. He goes on to set the example of how we should treat people with whom we may disagree or people we may have labeled or judged too quickly or too harshly. Jesus acknowledges the woman's reason and her argument, and then he heals her daughter. He listens to what this woman has to say, and he finds her smart and bold and passionate on behalf of her daughter. And he heals her daughter. We see Jesus loving and ministering to this woman, whom he did initially mistreat. He treats her as his very beloved own. And that's where we find our comfort. This is the Jesus that we know. This is the Jesus who loves us all so deeply. This is the Jesus who knows you, not by any label or category, but he knows you and calls you by name. This is the Jesus who loves you so deeply that no matter who you are or where you are from, he sacrificed himself for you. When we encounter a stranger, someone who may be an other, we often label or judge them. We might feel uncomfortable around them and dismiss them with a derogatory slur. And today's encounter shows us that that response is very human. But it also lifts up the better path, the more difficult response. When strangers come to us, we need to engage them, and we need to know their name. We need to listen to them, really listen to them, even people with whom we disagree, because they just may be making a strong argument. We need to trust, as the woman in today's text did, that there is no limit to God's grace and mercy and love, that God's goodness fills the banquet table, and it overflows onto the floor, and all are fed, the children, the strangers, and even the dogs. We need to know God's love and Christ's sacrifice is for everyone, everywhere. And that is the good news this morning. And for that, we say, thanks be to God. Please rise as you're able for our hymn of the day, number 722. Thank you. 
Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed as printed in our bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he was seated at the right hand. Gracious God, you call your church to proclaim the love of Christ to a needy world. Embolden us to be your risen body by welcoming strangers and serving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Great of God, small sprouts and tall trees proclaim your majesty. Give us clear eyes to see nature's beauty and wise minds to protect our home, this earth from misuse and harm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sovereign God, you draw order from chaos. Watch over the nations of the world. Bless citizens and leaders who strive toward the beloved community for which you long. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you give us all what we need. When your children suffer from hunger, poverty, loneliness, persecution, injury, or illness, send generous helpers and companions. We pray especially for those we name out loud or in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Welcoming God, you set a table for us. Embolden this congregation to seek new ways of inviting others to the feast of all creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You bless us with throngs of saints who witness to your compassion. With gratitude, we recall the lives and deeds of those who proclaim loving kindness to a needy world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your wide embrace, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.